So what I have here is some simple scissors, and the scissors are typically used for cutting out the patterns in the paper um, before sort of sticking them to the Depron. I generally cut outside each part by about five or six millimeters, which is about a quarter of an inch um, around the edges. If I, if I cut it exactly on the line, it makes it harder to see when you cut through the Depron with a knife. And if you make it um, sort of two or three millimeters, it tends to mess up the knife cut through the paper and the Depron. So I would say a five or six mil um, cut around the outside is spot on. The other thing you'll need as well in, is a straight edge. Um, this is very useful um, so you don't have to rely on your eye all the time when you're cutting your lines with your knife. Now, what I recommend is a Stanley blade, a uh, Stanley knife um, with interchangeable blades. Something like this is you know, pretty good. Every time you do a park jet, I would suggest you have a brand new blade. They go dull very, very quickly and um, once, they, once they go dull when you're cutting through Depron uh, you'll find that it drags on the underneath side of the Depron and it starts to really screw up your aeroplane design. So all, uh, for the cost of these, uh, not very much, uh, I would recommend you always keep super sharp. Um, the other thing is you're going to need from fairly early on is some uh, epoxy. Uh, now I tend to buy epoxy in larger containers but you know, these, plain, these designs don't need much epoxy, um, so um, something like this is perfectly adequate from most uh, DIY stores. Order online, you can get it much cheaper. Um, I tend to like to go for about 20 minute epoxy, it's pretty spot on for me. You'll need some masking tape, um, and uh, this is going to be used for uh, putting the carbon fiber slot into your Depron uh, for your wing spar. And, uh, you're going to need something like this as well. Um, some people like to use spray mount, uh, some people like to use this stuff, the Scotch um, Weld 77. Now uh, they've both got the benefits, um, they're all using a solvent based aerosol so you need to, if you're going to spray these on the back of your paper to help them stick to your depot while you cut out the pattern, uh, you don't want to be too heavy, especially this one because this is like permanent so you kind of just want to do a dusting, uh, a light dusting onto the, um, onto the back of the paper just enough to tack it in place while you you cut out the depth on anything more um, this one will stick it solid and it'll just tear your paper um, this stuff is also really good um, again you just just need it enough uh, to stick stick it to the paper it's not permanent it's supposed to be repositionable but again it's got solvents in it so you don't want to eat into your foam so just like again a light dusting on the back of the paper and when the paper uh, when it's dried a little bit then stick the uh, part onto your depth on And pretty soon into the game you're going to need some glue as well. I love this stuff, uh, although it absolutely stinks, it's, um, but uh, I, I find it to be uh, very good because it's um, quite elastic, it remains elastic and it has a good grip and it's lightweight. So it's not perfect for everything um, because it's a contact based glue so you have to make sure it's on both sides of the joints and then you touch them together and it's really gripped so you have to be quite confident when you stick your parts together with this stuff. Um, but it is good. There are others out there. There's one called Foam Tack. I've not used. I've heard good reports on. Um, there's Gorillas. There's polyurethanes. There's a whole load of different glues. People like to use um, a foam safe cyanoacrylate, which is a uh, super glue. Um, there's a whole load out there. But uh, I like to stick with this. I've used it for years. So I, um, it's a bit of a bit of a favourite of mine. Okay. Before you cut gouges out of your table or your desk work in your workshop I recommend uh, if you haven't got one already get yourself a cutting mat you can get a3 a2 a1 a variety of sizes my my personal preference is a1 um, but uh, having an a3 and an a2 around are also helpful depending on what you're cutting When cutting your carbon spars, I find a junior hacksaw is really convenient and a cheap way to get a pretty decent edge. Carbon tends to splinter when you cut through the edge of it, so you have to be very careful. Electric drill is quite handy for uh, drilling out the control horns.
Another tool I find invaluable throughout the whole uh, model making process is long nosed or needle nosed pliers. You can um, sort of reach into fuselage and pull wires through because they've got a long reach, and uh, you can also use the uh, strippers on them for removing the, the plastic sheath around the electrical cables. For fixing your pusher motor to your pusher motor bracket and adjusting your servo horns, it's really helpful to have a set of micro screwdrivers. Three D printers are here to stay and are incredibly useful as a hobby tool. I will be designing more and more three D printed parts for the range of part jets that I design. Of course, they can all be built without the use of a 3D printer, but it is an upcoming technology that's here to stay, and it makes light work of shaping nose cones, building protectors on your underside of, of your planes, uh, control horns, motor mounts, uh, lots of things can be made with a 3D printer. And of course, if you check out some of the prices, um, the costs are plummeting, and it's rapidly becoming a must-have tool for model makers.